In this video I want to pay some attention to the testing from diodes. Here you see quite a few of them. I want to explain later all the properties from these diodes. But the setup to do this test is um, this one. A resistor from 1K5 is connected to the diode. The diode is put into the conducting direction and we measure the voltage parallel to the diode. It's, <coughs> it's the barrier voltage. But that also shows a lot from the characteristic from the diode. Uh, we know that a silicon diode generally spoken has a barrier voltage from 0.8 volt and germanium 0.3 or 0.4 but we will see that that also depends on the voltage that is applied to the terminals from the diode. Here you see a lot of diodes. I've put them on a sort of board. Uh, the 1N4007 general purpose silicon diode, the 1N5408, 1000 volt and let's say 1 ampere or 2 ampere silicon diode, the BE409 high voltage diode that can handle approximately 12.5 kilovolts at 2 milliampere, the BI184 High voltage diode silicon BI206. Uh, high voltage silicon diode can handle approximately 200 volts or so, or 300. The OA81 typical germanium radio detector diode, like the 1N90 in America. This is the Philips version, the uh, European version. Typical radio detector. The OA202 is a germanium diode that was used in computer boards for uh, diode logic in the 70s, 1970. The OA31, also Western Europe, power diode from the 60s I think, perhaps the 70s. Uh, and now in the middle there's a... Um, diode from Russia that it has no uh, indication on it don't know what kind of diode it is but I'm gonna test it the BIX71 high power volt high power diode from Philips the BIV3250 used in computer power supplies double uh, it's a double diode often used in switching power supplies, very popular. This is the 1N4148, typical silicon fast switching diode. Uh, works on approximately 250 MHz. The OA182 germanium logic diode from the 70s, 1970. Unknown logical diode, salvage from a computer board 20 years ago, 25 years ago. Again an unknown diode, salvage from an unknown board. Unknown logical diode, I know it's a logical diode because I salvaged it from a computer board. Here the same, 1970 approximately. Germanium diode, I'm sure that this is a detection diode because of the way that is made. You can see a very very fine needle or a piece of very thin wire that rests on a piece of uh, semiconductor material and I'm sure, almost sure that that is germanium. Germanium diode don't know exactly where it comes from. It is from Siemens Germany from the 70s and the last diode here is a Russian diode, this one. And uh, a good way 
is, as I told, passive testing this uh, way of connecting the test circuit. And now I'm going to see what happens. Um, here is a power supply. It goes from 0 volt up to 55 volt. And we can see on the meter here what happens when we raise the voltage parallel to the diode that we are going to test. So the first test is this one. General purpose silicon diode. 1N4007. I raise the voltage now. Hope it will work. Now I'm going to 3 volts, 7 volts, 10 volts, 15 volts. And you can see that the voltage parallel to the diode stays the same, approximately the same. But it also has to do with the voltage that's set by the power supply. So when I set the power supply to a very high voltage, now it's 34 volts, you can see that the barrier voltage rises a little bit. Now I'm going back. So it is constant in a certain sense, but it also varies according to the voltage that is applied. The same will happen with the uh, silicon diode, power silicon diode, the second one. And again, now it's 24 volts, 30 volts, and you can even see that the voltage stays somewhat lower. Now it's 34 volts, 45 volts, but it stays fairly constant. A kind of Zener effect, let's say that have all, all diodes have a sort of Zener effect at the low voltage, but it's fairly constant. I think it's good to use in a power supply. This is a high voltage diode, can handle. Uh, sorry, I'm going to the next one. This is a high voltage diode, 12.5 kilovolts, the black one in the middle. Uh, I apply voltage to it, starting to with 0 volts, 20 volts, 34 volts, 50 volts, and you can see that the voltage, the barrier voltage from this high voltage diode uh, varies and is in fact very high. But it has to do with the extreme high internal resistance from a high voltage diode. Uh, such a di diode like this one and this one also, the red one, have a very high internal resistance and that means that we can see that the voltage that we measure parallel to that diode goes up. There is not something like a fixed barrier. Okay, we're going now to the typical germanium detection diode. The, it's now in the middle, OA81. And we raise the for voltage and to, the to the detection diode and we read the barrier voltage. Now I raise the voltage. And you can see, now it's 12 volt. And parallel to the germanium di detection diode, we measure 1.0 volts. Now I go to 27 volts and we measure 1.6 volt. So when we say that the germanium diode has a theoretical value from 0 0.6, sorry, 0 0.3 volts, that's not true. It depends on the voltage that is applied to the terminals from the diode. It will also mean that when you have a very strong radio signal, um, this diode will be, let's say, overloaded by the radio signal and a higher voltage will pass than we may expect. Just so this has to do with the typical properties from the detection diode. Now we go to the also a germanium diode, but a logic germanium diode, not a de detection diode. It's 
So that's here now in the middle, the black one, the OA202 germanium diode. And what we see there, I put down the voltage now to null volt, zero volt, so we have to wait some, some time. Because there's a capacitor in my power supply, it has to drain out. What happens when we apply a voltage to a germanium logic diode? Now I'm going up with the voltage now. And now I am half the voltage from 12 volt. And we see that we find uh, a barrier voltage from 7.8 volt. Now we go to 20 volt and we have 0.8 volt as a barrier voltage. Now we go to 30 volts and we still have 0.8 volt as the barrier voltage. So this is also a germanium diode, but the properties from this diode differ completely from the detection diode. There is a sort of fixed barrier voltage. And that's also logical because these diodes have to uh, switch zeros and ones. So uh, the diode must block completely uh, when the voltage level, the logic voltage level, is uh, too high. Let's say too high. Uh, we now go to the OA31, the one in the middle. Very, very obsolete. From the 70s or the 60s, I don't know that exactly. What happens with this diode? It was a power diode made for military purposes. I put up the voltage now. Let's say we do now 18 volts and we see a barrier voltage from 0.2. So I think that's not normal. This diode has lost its properties, I think. Now 34, 34 volts, still 0.2. But perhaps when we see in this big voltage range that this barrier voltage stays the same, perhaps this diode is healthy. I don't know. Now we go to a germanium de detection diode made in Russia. This one in the middle of the screen. This one. How does it uh, act when we raise the voltage? 7 volts, 12 volts, 18 volts, 24 volts. So we see that it acts more or less the same as the germanium radio detector diode that I've showed earlier. This one with the red band on it. So I'm sure this is a germanium detection diode, useful for a radio circuit. Uh, this is a high power Philips diode. Can handle a lot of current and a lot of voltage. The BIX71. Uh, we start with zero. I we measure now the barrier voltage. At 15 volts, it's 0 0.5. 27 volt, 0 0.6. 40 volt, 0 0.6. So it's very stable, the barrier voltage. That's all we can say. Uh, it shows also the properties. Perhaps this video takes too much time, but now the final one. I've showed it all, I think, up until now. This is the typical switching diode. Fast switching diode. 1N4148. Barrier voltage at 12 volt, 0.7. 24 volts, 0 0.7, 34 volts, 0 0.7, so very stable. And according to this value, we, you can ab be absolutely sure that it's made from silicon. And it's stable. So when you test all these other diodes, you can see whether they are stable, whether they are germ uh, made from germanium or silicon. And... Um, it's a way to get an impression from a diode, how it will act in a certain uh, circuit.